Good morning, Marty. Thanks for being on with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. You sound uh, you sound good and strong here on the phone. You sound oh, that's good. I'm glad. You sound like you're at the top of your game. <laughs> well, we followed you quite closely in the last season of 24 as oh, well, so John Boy. We did. Yes. Were you... you as disappointed as I was when they blew me up? Oh my God! Expecting the the, the flag to be at half mast. That's the <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, how uh, close is the character Jonas Hodges that you played to the real John Voigt? Dangerously close. <laughs> but I get a lot more respect since I did that performance. <laughs> I, I bet. Well, we didn't think it was at all close to the John Voight that we thought we knew, and then you uh, you made this uh, speech to the Republican Senate House fundraising group, and at that point we went, wow, okay, maybe we don't know John Voight at all. Yeah, well. Because we thought we... Uh, little we, by little. Although it wasn't little by little at that point. You uh, you kind of just laid it out all, all on the table when you said uh, um, everything Obama has recommended has turned out to be disastrous. I said what I said. You can interpret what you want, and you could say anything you want. You got the forum. You can say anything you want over the air. I said what I said. And if people want to look at that speech, have them read the whole. Have them look at the whole thing. Okay, so certainly if you're going to try to convince me over the air to take back what I said. You're not going to be successful. Well, I'll take back, tweak it maybe a little bit to at least give the guy a chance well, then, to play his then, hand and see if it turns out to be well, a winning hand or a losing hand. Listen, he's he's done an awful lot, and he has an awful lot of power. Guillermo del Toro is on the line here. English was not your first language, but I always find that foreigners tend to speak English better than than we Americans speak well, English. I don't know if that's always the case, but uh, but there is you know two of my favorite writers of uh, in, in the English literature uh, are you know Polish or Russian, you know Joseph Conrad and Vladimir Nabokov, and uh, it was their second language. Now I am not. Uh, trying to say we're writing at that level. I, I'm, I am a creator of purple plo- the purple prose of Cairo. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 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 I I love them. I love uh, thinking of them as incredible models to to try and live uh, to. You know. You are a collector in general, are you not? Yeah. Well, it, it, to to a point where um, you know, for many years I occupied three quarters of the family home, and about two years ago uh, I had a very Beautiful illumination. I decided to actually buy myself a man cave. <laughs> and, and about five blocks away from my house, I bought a large, large home, and uh, which is now completely filled with my my uh, original collection of art and books and uh, trinkets and toys and props. And it's essentially like a mini museum of uh, weird and <laughs> unsettling stuff. The insurance on that place must be out of control. Well, yeah. What is great is to see the appraisers go through it. <laughs> you know, that's where, you know, how much do you think the pickle, the pickled two-headed fetus is worth? You know, or, or these are that. the amputated latex leg. Uh, how do you value that? <laughs> quite, it's quite quite funny to see that. Is it well organized? I mean, do you... Are, it, are, is, it is. I mean, I'm, I have an incredibly uh, neat organizing system. Um, I'm pretty obsessive about it and you know if you ask me for a book in my library it'll take me two seconds to know exactly where it is i do it all myself oh don't even tell me that again yeah, yeah, yeah because uh i compartmentalize my time very well and uh, for about a year i utilize the four or five hours of every day to do it myself because if you do it with an assistant or somebody else does it for you it's half the fun gone away. Uh-huh. <laughs> As a greedy, fat kid, you want to play with your toys. Is it a, a dust haven? Is there dust everywhere? No, you know, I, I, I believe firmly that dust should be preserved. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I do wipe the floor and uh, this and that myself, but I, I don't dust anything. <laughs> Madeline Albright is on the line with us on the cover of your new book, Memo to the President-Elect. You are wearing a fantastic brooch. Isn't it nice? It's a great pin that was made for me by somebody. It's an eagle. Uh, And my next book is going to be about my pins, so uh, stay tuned. And you know what happened was it all started when Saddam Hussein called me a snake. (laughs) Oh, that time. I had a snake pin, and then I thought, well, it would be fun to have pins that reflected my moods, and so I used to say to people, read my pins. How many languages do you speak? 
I speak five languages. I uh, English, French, uh, Czech. I was born in Czechoslovakia, so I'm bilingual in that. And then I speak Russian and Polish. And um, and I love speaking languages. And I think it really makes a difference in terms of diplomacy and being able to really understand another country's history and culture. So when you say you speak these languages, you speak it well enough to where you could actually negotiate an agreement in that language. Well, I tell you, I, 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 I speak Czech and French well enough to do that, but I never negotiated in anything but English. Uh, but it did give me a chance when the other side was speaking in their language before they actually did the translation to understand what they were saying and get my head around what I was going to respond. So yeah. Interesting. it was a big help. Speaking of these negotiations, you know, we're part of the public. We see the glad handing and the, the press opportunities that, that are revealed to the public. But what actually goes on behind the scenes? Are you really negotiating deals, or is that left for low-level bureaucrats later on after you guys have paved the way? Well, it's interesting. It's a combination of things. Often the uh, travel by a secretary of state is an action-forcing mechanism. The bureaucracy has to come up with something for the secretary of state to say. And then on the other side, uh, those who are listening to it, they have to have something to say. So the lower-level people do it. But I, we actually negotiate at the secretary of state level for the minister. you really got to solve some deals. And so, yes. It's a hand-to-hand work. Good morning, Marty. How are you? Very well, thank you. Can I, we just want to hear you say hi, Marty, and hi, Jody, in that in that rich baritone of yours. Hi, Marty. Hi, Jody. There you go. All right. We'll buy the car insurance already. <laughs> Good to have you on the uh, the program again. Uh, you, the man, uh, and, and I just want to get your take on this, the man uh, more than any other uh, responsible for Barack Obama being the president of the United States of America. True or false? Oh, I gotta say, Barack Obama is responsible for being president of the United States. If anything, you know, I, I may have opened the eyes and minds and hearts to the possibility, he, he, but not everybody could just walk through that door. You know, uh, it had to be it had to be Barack. Wh- uh, and of course, we're referring to your character on the very popular series Twenty Four, uh, where you played uh, David Palmer, uh, a very uh, wise. And uh, and well, a good-tempered um, uh, African American president. Yeah. When when they asked you to play this role, when you knew you were going to be the pre- president in this, uh, in well, this I didn't know. Ex- I, I I was going to be uh, I was going to be the senator running for president, and I didn't really know if I was going to survive the first season. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And the response to the character was so uh, great. Uh, they decided to uh, you know make him president the next season. At, at that point, you must have thought, well, this is entirely fictional. This will never come to pass in my lifetime. You know what? That's not necessarily true. I think I was quoted after uh, or during the second season. And I think that, I don't even think the, uh, the, guy, the person asking me the question was really serious about it. He says, well, you think there will ever be an African-American president in your lifetime? I said, yeah. And they say, what year? I said, well, uh, I think 2012. And I could, I could hear a little audible snicker, uh-huh. you know, and um, I said, wow. I said, really? You're, you're laughing. I, I said, you know, I, I said, I, I completely think it's possible. At that point, did you have anyone in mind? No. I just said, if, you know, if, my, if playing this role influenced one person to step up and, 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 and go for it, uh, I'd have done my job. And, um, and then, lo and behold, here comes Barack Obama. Have you ever met the president? Yes, I have, several times. And did he ever share with you the influence that your character had on him? Uh, no, not so much. He's just, you know, he's he's introduced me as, uh, you know, uh, the first. <laughs> <laughs> your trophy case must be overloaded. Or have you have you given up even displaying those anymore? Do you just they're have on, them in a box? They're on some shelves. Yeah. yeah any, any one of those that stands out in particular? I think maybe the first one that I got for the Gary Moore show, the first Emmy, and um, the first People's Choice, and the Peabody. What about the Presidential Medal of Freedom? That's lovely. Uh, and the Kennedy. <laughs> I feel the same way about mine. It's just like, <laughs> oh, Kennedy whatever. <laughs> Uh-huh. All right. Carol, thank you uh, so much. It's, it's Oh, it's so nice talking. Thank your audience. I really appreciated uh, 
there calling in and asking questions. You bet. And more opportunities to ask Carol Burnett questions. Uh, Sunday, McCaw Hall. You're up in Vancouver right now, yeah? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, have a good time up in Vancouver, and I hope Seattle treats you very, very well when Thank you're down you, over the Marty. weekend. Take care. Bye, Jody. Bye. Bye, dear. Bye.